On this week's episode of the Rambler Sports Locker, the men's and women's cross country teams competed at the MVC Championship, and RSL reporter Annalise Achenfels looks into the number 86. Also, women's soccer faced Valparaiso in the first round of the MVC Women's Soccer Tournament, and Ramble host Kelsey Fru and her Ramble analyst discuss the NFL in London. Welcome back to another episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Patricia Martinez. And I'm Haley Spittler. On Saturday, October 28th, the men's and women's cross country teams competed at the Missouri Valley Conference Championship in Springfield, Missouri. Redshirt senior Alex Baker led the way for the men's team in the 8K race. He finished runner-up with a time of 24 minutes and 38.9 seconds, which was just one second shy of the first place winner from Bradley University. Baker received a first-team All-Missouri Valley Conference selection for his performance at the race. This is the second consecutive year he has been awarded the honor. Senior Peter Shabel and junior Kevin White earned honorable mention All-MVC accolades for their 11th and 13th place finishes. The men's team ultimately took home fourth place out of the 10 teams that competed with a total of 93 points. The women's team also had a team total of 93 points. They finished in third place at the MVC Championship, which is the top MVC women's finish in program history. Redshirt junior Lindsay Brewis ran the 5K in 17 minutes and 7.8 seconds, which earned her the first place individual finish. Brewis was named the 2017 Missouri Valley Conference Women's Cross Country Athlete of the Year and received first team all MVC honors. Brewis is the first MVC cross country champion in program history. I sat down with Brewis to discuss this achievement, which is something that means a lot to her. It means a lot. I am so grateful that I was able to represent Loyola on the um, conference stage. And it just doing it um, and running for my school and my team, it means the world to me. I'm so, so happy to be able to do it for, for that aspect. Brewis also reflected on her team's third place finish and what it means for them going forward. We were happy with it. If you look at the results on paper, we were very pleased, um, but we're not you know, satisfied. We have such high goals as a team, um, and we were really shooting for first, and um, the Valley's competition is so tough that you know, Bradley and you and I definitely deserved first and second, but we are not ready to give up, and um, we're definitely very hungry going into regionals. On Wednesday, November 1st, Bruis earned yet another award, this time for her work inside the classroom. Bruis was selected as the MVC Enterprise Bank and Trust Company Women's Scholar Athlete of the Week. Bruis, an information systems major, holds a 3.53 cumulative grade point average. The men's and women's team will next compete at the NCAA Regional on November 10th in Ames, Iowa. On Sunday, October 30th, the women's soccer team played against Valparaiso University in the first round of the MVC Women's Soccer Tournament. The Ramblers defeated the Valparaiso Crusaders with a final score of 2-1 after junior Jenna Sesney found the back of the net twice. Senior Avalon San Raymond and freshman Jenna Ross assisted Sesney to take the lead in the 34th minute. Valparaiso responded with a goal of their own three minutes later, tying the game. Sesney answered again in the second half when her shot at the far post got past the Valparaiso goalkeeper. The Ramblers had to defend their 2-1 lead with just 10 players for the last 20 minutes after sophomore Sienna Cruz received her second yellow card of the game. Cruz will be suspended for the next round of the tournament. The team moves on to the semifinals to take the second-seeded Missouri State this Friday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. On Monday, October 30th, the MVC awarded Sesney as the Missouri Valley Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Sesney has started in the 15 of Loyola's 19 games so far this season and leads the MVC with 14 goals and 33 overall points. Last Saturday, October 28th, the men's soccer team faced MVC leader Missouri State. The Bears were first to get on the board after scoring a goal in the ninth minute of the game. However, just eight minutes later, junior Fabian Lifka tied the game with an assist from senior Elliot Collier. The game remained tied at one through the first half. The Ramblers broke the tie and took the lead in the second half after Ben Strude of Missouri State deflected the ball past his own goalie. Loyola kept the lead and won the game with a final score of two to one. This was the first away win against the Bears in Loyola program history and the first conference loss of the year for Missouri State. 
The Ramblers are now 7-6-3 and three for the season and 3-3-1 three, three and one in conference play. Their last game of the regular season is this Saturday, November 4th, against the Evansville Purple Aces. A lot has been happening outside of Loyola Sports. RSL reporter Annalise Ockenfels is here to catch you up and take a closer look at the number 86 in this week's By the Number. For today's By the Numbers, I'm going to be focusing on the number 86. In 1986, the Chicago Bears took home the Super Bowl XX title by destroying the New England, New England Patriots 46-10. to This past week, Chicago Bears tight end number 86, Zach Miller, was taken off the field after landing oddly and dislocating his knee. Doctors said they were, not working, they were not only working to save his career, but his leg. This week's special team NFL player of the week is defensive lineman Tyrone Crawford of the Dallas Cowboys. He earned this title with his um, block on Nick Crawford of the Washington Redskins. This block allowed Crawford's teammate Orlando Skandrick to return the ball 86 yards to the four-yard line on the Washington Redskins side. Major, Le Major League Baseball player Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers hasn't pitched more than 100 pitches in his 10 game starts since he was removed from the disabled list. Kershaw has averaged 86 pitches in the last 10 games, which is exactly what he pitched in day one opener of game one of the World Series. That's all for this week's By the Numbers. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Annalise Ockenfels, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Annalise. On Saturday, October 28th, the Loyola hosted the men's basketball team's only exhibition game of the preseason against NCAA Division II rival Lewis University. The Ramblers defeated the Flyers 79-63. Senior Andre Jackson was one of four key players to score in double figures. The Ramblers scored 22 out of their 24 attempts from the foul line. Foul line. Jackson finished with a game high of 20 points. Loyola also scored 15 points from junior Marcus Towns as he made his first appearance as a Loyola Rambler. The Loyola men's basketball team will open its season on November 10th when it hosts Wright State. The women's basketball team begins its preseason on November 7th with an exhibition game against Concordia University at 7 p.m. in the Gentile Arena. The Houston Astros won their first World Series title in team history Wednesday night after defeating the Los Angeles Dodgers 5-1 in Game 7. For the first time since 2001 and 2002, the MLB had back-to-back -back World Series go to seven games. Another Houston team has been in the news for different reasons after Houston Texans owner Bob McNair made headlines last week after he was interviewed by ESPN. RSL reporter Alfredo Rodriguez tells us his thoughts on McNair's inmate comments in this week's rant. I am Alfredo Rodriguez. After a meeting held by 11 NFL team owners and a group of 12 NFL players, Houston Texans owner Bob McNair was quoted by, an, by ESPN outside the lines saying, quote, we can have we, can have, we can't have inmates running the prison, unquote. Shortly before the Texans lost on Sunday at Seattle, McNair offered an apology attempting to deny that players were the point at issue and that he was instead referring to the, how the relationship between the league and ownership has negatively, negatively affected the National Football League. About 10 Houston Texans players included wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins and running, back and running back Dante Foreman did not practice on Friday before the game at Seattle due to the owner's comments according to a report by ESPN. In my opinion, the protests of important players is a demonstration of the political, that the political argument has taken over football to the point that it has caused an internal issues in the Houston, Texas organization and has undermined the success of rookie quarterback Deshaun Watson, who last week was selected as AFC of Offensive Player of the Week. Regardless, regardless of who Mag McNair called inmates, his use of language speaks for itself. It is a representation of the arrogance of the people who hold the power in this league. Political demonstrations in the NFL have not gone unnoticed by some of its sponsors. Flemington Car and Rock County, as well as Phil Long Ford, canceled their NFL advertisement in cable networks a month ago, and more recently, John Schnatter, CEO of Papa Jones, criticized Commissioner Roger Goodell and recognized the NFL pro that the NFL protests have hurt, this, have hurt the Papa Jones sales. 
After a meeting that was supposed to calm down the controversy around the protests and switch the focus back to football, McNair's statements and strange apology are just one more blow to the, to the, NFL, to the National Football League. Thanks, Alfredo. Ahead of their match on Friday, October 27th, the women's volleyball team was in a 15-game losing streak. They tried to snap that streak against MVC rival Valparaiso. However, the Crusaders shut out the Ramblers, winning all three sets with scores of 25 to 19, 25 to 12, and 25 to 22. Loyola junior Morgan Gresham had a match high 11 kills. The team was back in action this past Monday, October 30th, against Southern Illinois University. The game started out strong for the Salukis, who cruised to a 25-11 victory in the first set. However, the Ramblers were able to tie the match with a second set victory of 25-22. Loyal went on to win the next two sets with scores of 28-26 and 25-22. The win came with the help of freshmen L. Van Grinsven and Gresham, who combined for 31 kills. This was Loyola's second win of the season and their first of conference play. During the game, junior Maddie Moser reached a milestone after recording her 1,000th career dig. The women are now 2-21 and on the season and 1-11 and in conference play. They will compete next against Bradley University this Friday, November 3rd, at home in Gentile Arena. Football season has passed the halfway point, and last week's Brown and Vikings game raised questions as to whether or not the NFL belongs in London. Kelsey Frew and her Ramble analyst discuss the NFL's international future in this week's Ramble. Welcome to the Ramble. I'm your host, Kelsey Frew. With me today, I have Sajida Alcazale and Evan Nave, and we will be talking about the NFL trying to make an effort to become an international sport. So they ended their international series on Sunday after four games in London. And that brings us to, excuse me, that brings us to the question of, do you guys think it's worth it for the NFL to go abroad, or should they just keep the sport within the US? Sajida, let's start with you. Well, thank you so much for having me, Kelsey. I'd like to say that logistically speaking, the NFL should not expand internationally. I think the NFL has a lot of financial considerations first before they can even think about going internationally. All right, and Evan, what about you? Oh, well, um, thank you, Kelsey. So I believe that the NFL would benefit by, um, by going global because um, it'll, it'll prove that it is um, active, inclusive, and it'll uh, tar be able to cater to multiple target audiences. So uh, my question for you guys is, okay. so far so, so far in uh, the International League, uh, they have four games, and all of the games that were in London this season were blowouts. They weren't exciting games. So do you think this has an impact on their efforts? Do you think they need to step up their performance, or will they be able to garner the support anyway? Evan, what are your thoughts? Um, I believe that they'll still be able to, um, I'll, I'll be able to, I believe that they'll still be able to garner support um, because football is already increasing and is already very popular in, in London. Um, it's going to, um, like, they have a lot of potential to increase to, uh, to other cities like uh, Mexico, Germany, Brazil, um, the, you know, and <clears throat> the um, football is proving that it's just not an American, uh, not just an American sport anymore, you know. Um, it promotes unity, it's, um, and it'll show that anyone of any race or any social status can play football, you know, and um, it might it has potential to expand to even including women having their own um, um, football league for women. And Sajda, what do you think? Do you think it's they have enough support or do they need to do more? Is it not worth it? I think the fact that those games were blowouts is enough proof that the NFL shouldn't expand internationally just for the fact that we're talking about traveling across continents, which involves a lot of time and money. So we have a lot of our players who are going to be extremely tired because they're traveling so far in order to play a game. Um, also, this means that the NFL needs to create a fan base from all across Europe, not just from London, in order to pay to go to these games. So that's a lot of considerations to take place. And we're also asking these countries to accommodate us more than, they're, more than we're accommodating them. At some point, the NFL is going to have to make a stadium or find a stadium for the players in London to come play with us. And like I said, that's a lot of financial consideration, and we just don't have that right now. And then, so, so, so far in the series with those four games, despite, you know, the poor results, they still did have a really solid turnout. Do you think that can carry over into other countries or is that just football is a trend in 
England right now? We've we've been we've been only been focusing on London for the past couple of years. It's going to take more years to go to each country, so it's going to take a lot more time in order to reach that audience. Evan. Um, well, well, I believe that it can um, it. It really can. Um, it really can expand. It's not just like a trend. Um, like the fact that it's already popular in another country. You know that really that that is really more known for soccer. It's proof that um, it has a lot of potential to grow. And um, a thing about football is that it's very active. You know, for um, for countries that. Um, like you know, for for country for countries that have like a high crime rate, um, this can actually be beneficial beneficial to keep people off the streets. This can help, um, like, by having people um, be a part of uh, football teams and um, by having members recruited as early as high school, or even middle school. They can focus on football, taking out all their rage on football and um, um, becoming winners on court. All right, so closing statements. Do you have any final comments, Ajita? I think the NFL needs to focus on its bases here at home before it could even think about going internationally. All right, Evan, anything else? Oh, thank you. Um, well, um, the NFL is um, growing and it's, cur and it's currently expanding. It has a lot of potential and promise, um, not only here but in other, um, in other countries as well. And I believe that um, the world should know um, the beautiful uh, sport of football. All right, well, thank you both for coming out. I think I'm going to have to go with Sajda on this one. I think with you know, the financial risk and the toll on the players and everything it'll take to really go abroad, uh, it's just an awful lot to take on right now. So that's it for this week's Ramble. Thank you both of you for coming out and come back next week and see Sajida at the host spot. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Kelsey. I agree with Sajida. The NFL should focus on problems that occur within the United States. For our full episodes and the chance to get in on the conversation, follow and like our social media handles for up-to-date look at all things Rambler Sports. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Patricia Martinez. And I'm Haley Spittler. Check back next week for another episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. And as always, don't forget to turn out the lights.